Hey there, my name is Jeremy Fontenot and this is Revival Missions. I want to welcome you to this episode and we have been unpacking a series concerning prayer, how to pray and get answers to your prayers. But did you know that there are hindrances to prayers? And it's very important for you uh, to know these hindrances so that they don't impede your prayer life. And so if you have your Bible, why don't you turn with me today to Mark chapter 11, and we're going to be reading in verse 12. Mark chapter 11 and verse 12. Now, I think for the believer, uh, anytime you start in Mark 11, um, verse, verse 12, and, and, and we look at this, this uh, story, the lesson of the fig tree, that is a great place to uh, start. It says in verse 12, Now the next day, when they had come out from Bethany, he, referring to Jesus, he was hungry. And seeing from afar he, uh, a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it. So Jesus is going to speak to a tree. Now, as crazy as, as that sounds, um, God spoke the world into existence. We, we understand by faith that God framed the world by his words. Words are very powerful. And watch what happens. Jesus speaks to the tree. He says, let no one, he's speaking to the tree, let no one eat fruit, fruit from you ever again. And then it makes note that his disciples, they heard it. If you skip down to verse 20, it says, now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. So when Jesus spoke to this tree, immediately this tree began to obey the words that he had spoken. And this tree began to dry up and wither from the very roots. And Peter, he, he sees it. He said, it says, and Peter remembering said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. I remember in school, we used to have something called show and tell. And, and this is what is happening right here with Jesus. Jesus is showing his disciples. So you could call this an illustrated sermon. The Bible says that all that Jesus began to both teach and do. Jesus wasn't just a teacher. He actually, he did things. He demonstrated the reality of the kingdom of God, and then he taught on it. Many times he would go and he would heal the sick, and then he would teach them. And so when Peter mentions this, Jesus says these words, have faith in God. And so the point of this illustrated sermon is that they would understand that when, when, when you speak to things, that it will obey you. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. And as you speak, Things will begin to line up with what you speak. And, and this is where I get that from. Verse 23, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, a mountain is like the biggest thing on the earth. And so we can speak to mountains. He says, for assuredly I say to you, whoever you are a whoever, if you're a believer of Jesus Christ, if your life is found in Christ by becoming born again, by, having, uh, by becoming a new creation and having the life of God on the inside of you, you can begin to speak to uh, mountains. Whatever problem is before you, you can speak to them. Be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Don't you love the preciousness of what Jesus came to present to us? He prayed to the Father. 
in John chapter 17, and he says, Father, I have given them your words. These are the precious words of Jesus that came straight from the Father. How awesome is that? We're not left to try to wonder how to be successful, how to live life, uh, uh, a successful life according to God's kingdom. We're not left in the dark. He lays it out very clearly for us. And he says this in verse 24. Therefore, I say to you. So so the tables are turned on to the disciples. They had just seen this illustrated sermon where he spoke to a tree and it obeyed his voice. And he said, have faith in God. And then he says this. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. This is the greatest lesson on faith that Jesus had ever taught. How powerful for him to demonstrate what he was talking about, what he wanted to teach, and and they see it with their own eyes, and then he unpacks, look, you can have this too. Whenever you pray, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Now, this context, if you will, is prayer, having faith in prayer and faith's confession that we can have what we ask for. We can have what we pray for. Now, Jesus is not changing the subject here, but he says this in verse 25 and 26, and whenever you stand praying, If you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. That word trespasses is the word sin. This is not one of those scriptures that you just want to peruse by. You want to stop and realize the importance of the words of Jesus because if your sins are not forgiven, there's no entrance into heaven. And he's saying here that we are forgiven by God for our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. You know, Jesus was talking about offense one day to his disciples, his, really his, his apostles. And in, I think it's Luke chapter 17, it's a, it's a, a lesson, several lessons there in, uh, um, to his disciples concerning leadership. And he begins to say that, that you know, there's going to be great offenses that will come. Many, that there's going to be a lot of offenses that come and so you need to learn to walk in forgiveness not just seven times in a day as as Peter had, had asked Jesus you know if, if someone sins against me um, you know should I just forgive them seven times and in one day and Jesus said no you forgive them 70 times seven in other words he was describing an infinite amount that you forgive people because the measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. And, and so when Jesus was teaching this leadership lesson on forgiving people, the disciples asked Jesus, they said, increase our faith because it, it takes faith to walk in this element of, of having a forgiving spirit. And so really answered prayers are contingent upon right relationships with people. And so before I I, I go down that that trail, there there was a man in Africa. When I was in in, in Bible school in in Singapore, we ended up, we watched this video, and I believe that this guy was was raised from the dead in a Reinhard Bunke uh, meeting. But there was this pastor who one day his wife had offended him in some way, shape, or form, And this man got really angry with his wife and didn't speak to her for two days. And 
was not on talking terms with his wife. She would greet him in the morning and he would just ignore her. And, and uh, he gets in his car. He's driving down the street and all of a sudden the brakes in his car, they go out. He's driving, brakes go out, and finally he gets in an accident. And um, this accident caused some internal damage and he went to the hospital. They brought him to the hospital and he told the doctor that he wanted to be transferred to another hospital. And so he gets into this ambulance and his wife is in the back of the car and they're on the way to this other hospital. And while he's in the back of the ambulance, he looks up and he sees two angels. When he saw the angels, he thought to himself, I'm going to tell my wife that these angels are here. They motioned to him telling him not to tell her. And within a matter of moments, he breathed his last breath. And these angels, they were there to receive him, and they bring him to heaven. When he gets to heaven, he begins to see the saints of God, and they are, they are glowing, uh, beautiful. They're just glowing, these, this bright glow like, like gold. And they were worshiping God, and he looked up and he saw the light, that is God. You know, Jesus said that he was the light of the world, but he is also the light of heaven. And there's no need for a sun. There's no need for a moon. And he was lighting up uh, heaven. And so this man, he's, he's seeing this light and he said he couldn't even really focus on the light. It was just too bright for him. Of course, those in heaven, they had heavenly bodies and they, they were able to look through the piercing light and see God and um, it was beautiful, and, and he wanted to be a part of the worship that was going on in heaven. He heard sounds of instruments he had never heard before, and it was beautiful worship. And, and the angel took him around heaven, and he saw these beautiful mansions in heaven built with materials that were unearthly. He looked at the flowers and, and the plant life, and even the flowers and plant life were worshiping God. It was, it was amazing. I love his description of, of, of heaven. And in a moment, the angel said, now I have to take you to hell. And they went to hell. And while he was there, he began to look at the people in the lake of fire. They were burning. And they were being tormented by their own thoughts and the things that they had dealt with on the earth. They couldn't speak to each other, but they were tormented in their own mind. And there were those that, that would eat their own flesh. And the angel spoke to this, this man who, who was a pastor himself. And um, he said that the reason that they're eating their flesh is because they were warlocks and witches on the earth, and they, they ate the flesh of, of people. And these people in hell, they would eat their own flesh and, and vomit it out. And it was very gross. And this pastor, he heard the cry of a pastor in, in, that was burning. And he said, I was a pastor, and I, and I stole money from the church, and I lied. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll pay it back. I'll pay it back. And, you know, this pastor that's there, this angel began to speak to him and told him that if God had closed the book of his life on that day, that hell would be his portion. He said, because you sowed unforgiveness towards your wife, therefore you cannot reap forgiveness from God. And uh, thank God the book of his life wasn't closed on that day. And his wife was, she had read in Hebrews where the women of old, they had received their dead back to life. And she began to contend and believe for her husband to be brought back from the dead. So she brought him to the church, and the, the church thought that, uh, you know, because he was in a casket, that 
Perhaps there was a bomb in the casket, so they brought the casket around to the back side of the church, and they all begin to gather around him, and they, they begin to pray and intercede and cry for, for life to come back to his body. And within a period of time, he was dead for three days, but within a period of time, uh, he came back to life and, and got right with his wife. And So praise God, that's the mercy and, and the grace of God. But you know, this is a very serious scripture to forgive people when they sin against us. Otherwise, our Heavenly Father will not forgive us. You know, Jesus shared in uh, Matthew chapter 18 an illustration. He said that there was a king who wanted to settle debts with his servants. One of his servants owed $100,000. This is the, uh, the message translation uh, version. And one of his servants owed $100,000 that he was unable to pay back. He couldn't pay it back. And so the king said, take this man, take his wife, his children, and all his possessions, and auction them off at the slave market. And this servant fell to his knees and began to plead with the king. The king was touched by this man's plea and forgave him all of his debt. Now that man represents you and I. In light of God, in light of the, the very presence, the very nature of God, God is light. In him there is no darkness. So when we stand up next to God, no matter how perfect you may think you are, in light of God, your imperfections are magnified times a trillion. And God has forgiven you and I the great debt of sin. And so Jesus continues on with this story. He said the servant walked out of the presence of of the king, and no sooner had he walked out that he met another fellow servant who had owed this servant ten dollars. And he grabs the man by the throat and says, Pay me back now. And when he couldn't, he put this man into prison until he could pay him back the debt. Well, word of this reached the ears of the king. And so the king had this man brought back to him. And this is what it said. The king summoned the man and said, you evil servant, I forgave your entire debt when you begged me for mercy. Shouldn't you be compelled to be merciful to your fellow servants who asked for mercy? The king was furious and put the screws to the man until he paid back his entire debt. And that's exactly what my father in heaven is going to do to each one of you who doesn't forgive unconditionally anyone who asks for mercy. It is important that you and I be in right relationship with God and with man. Jesus taught the importance of, of, of being in right relationship with God and with man. It's the law of relationships. And if you want the kingdom of God to work for you, then you must abide by the laws that are embedded within the kingdom of God. If you want to see answered prayers in your life, like I knew that God needed to answer my prayers back in 2006, when he placed a burden upon my wife and I for ministry to go into missions, to go um, to Southeast Asia and pursue uh, missions over there. And uh, I, I knew that in that moment when God was calling me that I had to get things right in the area of relationships because I was going to need God to answer my prayers on the mission field. And immediately God began to deal with my heart and he revealed an area that I just thought was water under the bridge. It happened many years um, previous. But I had worked for an employer who I was backslidden at that time. 
and uh, when I'd worked for him, and he had taken advantage of me. He told me he was going to pay me a certain amount of money, and he never paid me that amount of money. And a couple years went by, and I worked a great deal uh, for this man, and I was the manager of the company and took care of everything. I had the finances of the company going, flowing through my hands, and I was running the crews and ordering uh, $50,000 worth of, of material every week for this company. And meanwhile, my boss was a, a man of the field. And so one day I, I thought, well, you know, he hasn't paid me what he promised. And so I took advantage of this man and I took $2,000. Took $2,000 from the company. And I went and I bought a new truck, I placed a down payment using that, that money. And um, I, I put a down payment on a brand new truck. Well, within a few months, I had a cousin of mine who ended up uh, totaling that truck in, in an accident. And, um, you know, it just never pays uh, to try to get ahead through dishonest gain. And that's exactly what I did. And so, you know, some years went by, and I, I thought it was water under the bridge, but when God was calling me to ministry, He reminded me of, of that, that, uh, that time when I had taken that money, told me to get that right. And so I called my old employer. He was a big guy, massive man, and I called him up and I said, I need to meet with you. And I met with him in a parking lot. I jumped in the cab of his truck, and I told him God was calling my wife and I to the mission field, into ministry, and that there were some things that I needed to get right in my own life. And I confessed what I had done. I had taken this man's uh, money, $2,000, from his company. And wouldn't you know it, this man, he told me that he had forgiven me and that he, didn't want, he would not take my money and encouraged me to do what God had called me to do. You know, in that moment, that man, he, he divvied out a measure of mercy and forgiveness to me. And Jesus told us, I think it's in Luke chapter 6, to forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given back to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. The measure that you use will be measured back to you. So that man, he had a tremendous amount of mercy and forgiveness to me, towards me. That's what he measured to me. Therefore, I believe that God's going to give him a great measure of mercy and forgiveness in his own life. And that should be the attitude of every Christian that we walk in a manner in a, of forgiveness, that we have a, a forgiving spirit, no matter what anyone does for us, because we live in light of the fact that God forgave us for all of our sins. He took all of our sins upon the cross and paid the price, the punishment, the penalty for what we did wrong. He took that long laundry list of what we did and he clicked control, alt, delete. And it's all been cleared. It's all been scrubbed away clean. We are now sinless in the eyes of God. He has forgiven you and I. So how could we hold anything against anyone? no matter what they have done to us. It's like taking someone who owes us 10 bucks by the throat and putting them in prison. And really, it doesn't put them in prison. It puts you in prison. We cannot afford to have unforgiveness in our heart. Listen, today, release anyone in your life that you are harboring unforgiveness towards. Forgive them today and free yourself. 
Amen. God bless you. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. For more teachings, please go to jeremyfontenot.com. That's where you'll find our media ministry, Revival Missions. We are a ministry that prioritizes in winning souls and provide biblical teaching in healing, faith, financial prosperity, and living free from sin and living in victory. If you would like to be more than just a casual listener, but would like to financially partner with us to see the kingdom of God advance, please go to Jeremy Fontenot forward slash give for a quick and easy way to give. Thanks for watching. God bless.